Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to implement Steam Networking in Godot 4. To get started, first over to this link which will be in the description down below. Then click on the appropriate link that matches your operating system. Now you should have this file, right click, and extract. Hey, while that's extracting, please consider hitting that big red button. Now once that's extracted, go to open up that folder, drag out the name so you can see it better, select the editor.win64, go to create a new project, once in there, go to create a new scene, I'm just going to call it main, let's go to add a new script. We're going to need a few variables, one of which being our lobby ID. So we'll create a lobby ID. This will be an integer, initialized to zero. Next will be our peer, so variable peer. This will be a Steam multiplayer peer type, and we won't initialize it to anything right now. Next will be our player scene, so our player object itself. And since we want to set this from the inspector, we'll do at export variable player scene. We'll set this to be a packed scene. Finally, we'll just have a variable saying if we are the host or not. So variable is host. This will just be a Boolean initialized to false. Next, we need to initialize Steam. So in our ready function, so function ready, we'll go ahead and call steam dot steam init. Now we need to pass in our app ID. If you don't already have one, you could just use 480 for now. So we'll pass in 480 and set this to true. And since this function returns a true or false value, I'm just going to go ahead and embed it inside a print function. So print steam initialize then place inside our steam initialize function and now this will print if we are initialized or not we also need to initialize our relay network access so steam dot init relay network access without this other peers will not be able to talk to each other next let's go to create a function for hosting the lobby so function host lobby here we'll call steam dot create lobby here we'll pass in what lobby type we are. So we want to do a public lobby. So steam dot lobby type dot lobby type public. And let's set it to be 16 members. And since this makes us the host, we'll set is host to be true. Now we need to run some code when the lobby itself is created. So function on lobby created. We'll have two arguments, one being our results, so we get integer, and our lobby ID, which will also be an integer. If our results equals steam dot results dot results okay, then we'll set our lobby ID up here. So self dot lobby ID to be the lobby ID passed in. So lobby ID. Next, let's go to initialize our peer. So peer gets steam multiplayer peer dot new. Turn on server relay. So peer dot server relay gets set to true. Create the host peer dot create host. Set our multiplayer peer. So multiplayer dot multiplayer peer to be our peer. We need to quick make two more functions, one being for adding the player and one for removing a player. So function add player. The player will have an ID which is different than our Steam ID. So ID integer defaulted to one. We'll go and instantiate our player scene. So player variable player gets player scene dot instantiate. We'll set our player dot name to be that ID, so str formed ID. We'll call deferred add child player. This will create a player scene as a child of our main node. Next, we need a function for removing our player, so function remove player. This will also have an ID, but it won't be defaulted to any sort of value. We need to first check if we actually have that player, so if not self dot has node str ID. We'll just return. However, if we do, we'll call self dot get node scr id dot q three. Now we need a way to actually call these functions, so we'll go to connect them to our multiplayer. So multiplayer dot peer connected dot connect add player. Then multiplayer dot peer disconnected dot connect remove player. We also need to create a player for ourselves, so we'll just go ahead and call add player once. 
We also need our lobby created function to be called. So go ahead and connect it to our Steam. So Steam dot lobby created dot connect on lobby created. Next, we need a way to call our host lobby function. So it's going to create a button. This will be our host button. And we'll just say host on it. Go ahead, connect it to button pressed to main. Is that here? We'll just call host lobby. Now let's quickly jump over to our player scene. Nothing fancy here. I just have a WASD controlled 2D player. We do, however, need to make a few modifications for this to be suitable for multiplayer. First, once we've entered the tree, we'll set multiplayer authority to be our name dot two int. And since we only want to be reading input if we own the player, we'll check if not is multiplayer authority. If it's not, we'll just return so we don't read any input. We'll also need a multiplayer synchronizer so we can synchronize specific properties of our player. So multiplayer synchronizer. We'll synchronize just our position for now. However, you can synchronize as many properties as you would like. So position. Back to our main scene now. We need to add a multiplayer spawner. Assigning our path to be the main scene. And inside of our auto spawn list, add our player scene. And finally, we need to go to our main and drag and drop our player scene into the player scene variable that we set before in here. And now if we run the game, you see that Steam has initialized. If we press host, we'll spawn in our host player. Finally, we just need a way to join the lobby. It'll be very similar to our host lobby functionality. So we'll create a function called join lobby. This time, however, we need to pass in our lobby ID. So lobby ID as an integer. Then we'll call steam.join lobby, passing in our lobby ID. Now we need to run some code when we join the lobby. So function on lobby joined. This will take in four arguments, one of which being our lobby ID. So lobby ID as an integer. Next will be our permissions. If it's locked and response. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll just be using the lobby ID argument. Next, we'll set our self dot lobby ID to be that of the lobby ID pass in as the argument. We'll be setting our peer to be steam multiplayer peer dot new. Set so relay. Next, we'll create a client. So peer dot create client. We need to pass in the lobby owner ID. So steam dot get lobby owner, and then pass in the lobby ID. And finally, we'll set our peer. So multiplayer dot multiplayer peer gets peer. And just like our on created function, we need to connect this to our on join function. So up here. We'll do steam dot lobby joined dot connect and then pasting in on lobby joined. Now this will actually get called on every single peer regardless if they are joining or not, which can cause some issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new variable called is joining down in our on lobby join. We'll set is joining to be true. So our lobby joined. If we are not joining, so if not is joining, we will return. And then at the end of the joining code, we'll simply set is joining back to false. Button for joining, we need to also have a way to enter in the lobby ID. So we'll create a new line edit node. Just call this ID prompt. I'll go ahead and put lobby ID inside of our placeholder text. So lobby ID. Also disable our join button for now in case this is not filled in. I also want to have a way to quickly reference these nodes within our script. So control and drag them over to our script. Instead of our ID prompt, I'm going to connect the text change signal to the script. We'll set join button dot disabled to be if the new text dot length is greater than, sorry, equal to zero. And finally, let's connect our join button pressed. We will call join lobby, passing in ID 
prompt dot text dot two int. We also need a way to quickly access that lobby ID. So instead of lobby created, I'll just go and quickly print lobby created lobby ID and print out lobby ID. I'm currently hosting a lobby on my laptop. So I'll go ahead and paste in that lobby ID into the join prompt, press join. And you'll see I have my character and on the laptop. Anyways, guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.